sailed to Key West and back to East Coast of Florida. From Florida Days by Vilma M. Goodman. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Bologna Times. Sail to Key West and back to East Coast of Florida. By Vilma M. Goodman. The sail down the Gulf of Mexico, lasting a day and night, was without any thrills or incidents, but the weather was fair and warm, and watching the ever-changing shades of blue and green of the Gulf was a beautiful sight to me. I thoroughly enjoyed the meals and chats on deck, and was quite amused by the persistent attempts of a missionary's wife, Seventh-day Adventist, to convert me. She was a charming person but it wasted too many hours trying to reclaim my lost soul. I did not wish to be saved just in her particular way, and she realized at last that I was a hopeless case. There were several Methodist ministers returning from a conference to Key West, and they were exceedingly kind to me without trying to convert me. One of them, a tall, very pale gentleman, helped me locate my hotel in Key West. I trust that he has fully recovered his strength, his thin, pale face and occasional cough worried me. I reached the Key West Hotel late in the afternoon and got quite dizzy when I glanced at the thermometer on December 13th. It was broiling hot, and the minute I got into my room I rang for ice water and then prepared to take a cold bath in order to cool off, both internally and externally. The instant I opened the faucet, the strong odor of the water and the color of it disgusted me. I let it run a while and realized I could not bathe in Key West if I never took another bath in my life. The sweet perfume of onions, garlic, ancient eggs, and gas we are all familiar with, but this delicious extract of strong odors they call water in Key West smells as if all the above-named highly scented ingredients were put into a large bin and a tight lid put over it and left to ferment about ten years, and only then permitted to be used. Ye gods! I almost fainted, and I quickly turned off and got rid of all the aqua and waited until some of the ice in my pitcher melted. The small color boy was generous in handing out ice, for which may the angels always guard him, and I took a sponge bath. An hour later, I was in a street car on a tour of inspection. I enjoyed the refreshing breezes on the ocean side, and spent so much of my time there that I had no time left to see much of the town, and had to hurry back in order to reach the hotel before dark. Almost everybody here looked Spanish and spoke Spanish, as well as on the steamer. Early in the morning I was in the train bound for Miami. It was a hot, sultry day. But the windows were all open, and as we glided up through the keys, over the most beautiful body of water I ever saw, I was enchanted. I shall not attempt to describe the symphony of pastel shades during a thunderstorm lasting about ten minutes. Two rainbows added greatly to the beauty of the blending of light greens, blues, tans, and cream of the water and the sky. I gazed until my eyes almost closed, and then I began to reflect for a few minutes that, after all, it's man's genius, as well as his great enterprise, that made it possible to plan and construct the most wonderful railway in the world, on water, practically, for miles and miles. At times I worry too much, and usually cross a bridge long before I get to it, but I never thought it possible that I could safely cross so many and such long ones all in one morning. I arrived in Miami extremely tired. Among my acquaintances in Miami was a gentleman whom I had met on the steamer coming to Jacksonville, who did everything in his power to make me fall in love with Miami at first sight. I saw Miami Beach by moonlight, rode across the beautiful Bay of Biscayne, and over the three-and-a-half-mile bridge, before I had time to open my suitcase in the clean, neatly furnished room of the United States Hotel. It was sizzling hot. 
There is something about the atmosphere of this beautiful, prosperous city and vicinity that I cannot quite describe. An air of gaiety and good cheer on everyone's sunburnt face, and in the hotels and restaurants, the broad, manly shoulders of the officers, mostly from the aviation camp, with their intelligent, smiling faces, and the attractively gowned women, all wore a festive air. Every tourist drives around the James Deering estate, and I lost no time in seeing this choice garden spot of Florida, and the beautiful coconut grove leading to it. The natural growth here is luxuriant, and the vast amount of wealth, scientific knowledge, and labor combined spent to develop it have made this a paradise of beauty. It would be useless to mention the various kinds of tropical plants, trees, and gorgeous flowers and ferns. I shall leave all that to the imagination. There are so many places of interest to see near Miami that I had little time to rest. A few hours spent around the aviation camp, alligator farms, and Charles Deering estates were well utilized. I was urged to spend the entire winter in this large Garden of Eden, but firstly, Mrs. Stalker expected me in West Palm Beach, and secondly, I needed rest and quiet diversion much more than gaiety and excitement. And so I said good-bye to my kind and hospitable Miami acquaintances, and after three days of thorough enjoyment, I drove up the Dixie Highway to West Palm Beach on December 18th. Mrs. Stalker and her brother waited when the bus arrived and found accommodations for me for the night. End of Sail to Key West and Back to East Coast of Florida by Vilma M. Goodman